Today I'm going to be talking about Gibbs free energy. Yay! Free energy! Woohoo! So when we look at like enthalpy, we normally draw a, a reaction profile. So this would be energy. And then this is sort of the progress of reaction or the reaction coordinate. But that just means like how far into the reaction have we gone. And so you sort of start off with your uh, reactants and you end up with your products. I mean these are diff two different reactions. So this bit here and here are your activation energies. So that's the enthalpy change of, of this first reaction. Uh, we were having sort of an endothermic reaction where we take in heat and the energy of the system increases. Then it'd be delta H. Then it's this reaction so that's positive. And then this one is a different reaction, and it's exothermic, so your delta H is negative because the, en the enthalpy of the system is decreasing. In your head, you can kind of rationalise how an exothermic reaction happens because, well, as everything in life tends to be, um, things want to be in the lowest energy state as possible. So you go, okay, well, when it's losing, when a, a system is losing its energy to the surroundings, you know, it's releasing the heat becoming more stable as it goes lower in energy and then it becomes harder to rationalize an endothermic process so what how can something gain energy uh, to form products and that sort of actually happen if everything in sort of the universe wants to go into a, a lower energy sort of state and there's the effect of the actual sort of enthalpy like the energy contained within the bonds and then there's sort of the other aspect of it in terms of the disorder of the system, which is the entropy. If we look at the second law of thermodynamics, so the first one is energy is always conserved, can't be created or uh, destroyed. And the second law, when something is spontaneous. So for something to happen spontaneously, you know, to happen, to be able to happen, the entropy of the universe must increase. So entropy is like, like, is there a form of disorder in the system? So how many different ways can you arrange it without really changing it? Like, if you think of a gas, it's all, like, all over the place. There's, it's got more disorder, like, inherent disorder than uh, a liquid solution or a crystalline solid. Um, so that's sort of what we mean by entropy. The entropy of the universe, so it's, we'll say, delta S must be positive if we want a reaction to go ahead. And so delta S of the uni is the sum of delta S of your system and delta S of your surroundings. And then that comprises of everything to make up the universe, whatever's happening in your tiny system and then the rest, the surroundings. Okay? And if we look at these, you can, um, we can break these down further. So if we have a reaction I know these look a bit like sort of Japanese flags, but if we say this bit in the middle is our system. In an endothermic process, energy is going to enter the system um, as del delta H is going to increase, it's a positive change, it goes up, so heat goes into the system. In an exothermic process, the system loses heat and this goes into the surroundings. So, oh yeah, this box is supposed to be the whole universe and this is the system and this is the surroundings. If you give a solid or a liquid or a gas or whatever, if you give it more energy, heat energy, it's going to be move more and become more disordered. And the surroundings are going to decrease in entropy because they're get, it's the surroundings are normally gas. As you take in heat, they're losing heat and they're losing energy and so they're going to move around less and they're going to be less disordered. Whereas an exothermic reaction, it's releasing heat, the surroundings are going to become much more disordered. The entropy change of the system can be calculated in really complicated ways, but we can calculate sort of the entropy of the surroundings quite easily because if we think about what effect uh, each sort of enthalpy of the system is having on the surroundings, so in the endothermic process it's taking heat in and so the entropy of the surroundings is going to decrease and in the exothermic system uh, heat is going to be released and the entropy of the surroundings is going to increase because they're going to be moving more. So the reason it's negative delta H, if we have an exothermic system which is going to have a negative 
enthalpy, we said that that's going to increase the entropy of the surrounding, so it's going to be a positive change, so it's minus and minus, so it becomes positive. With an endothermic process, the um, enthalpy sign is positive. The entropy of the surroundings are decreasing, so it's going to be a negative change in entropy. So we end up with an equation which looks something like this. Delta S of the universe equals entropy delta S of the system minus delta H over temperature. And the reason it's divided by temperature is if you think you have a really, really hot room, if you add a bit more heat to it or take away a bit more heat from it, the entropy sort of, of that room, the gas, the molecules in there, isn't going to change a lot. So if that's a really temperature is really, really large, then the effect of the enthalpy on the entropy of the system is going to be small. If our temperature is really, really small, so if we think in a very cold environment, if you add a little bit of heat to a very cold environment, there's going to be a large change in the entropy of the sort of the surrounding molecules. Whereas, and if you take away heat, again, it's going to have a big change. So when T is small, the entropy of the surroundings is more affected by the enthalpy of the system. And then if we times everything by minus T, we end up with minus T delta S uni equals minus T delta S cis add delta H cis. Now we can figure out sort of the cis because obviously we're talking about a system, we're never going to be talking about the surroundings of something, everything's always in terms of our system. But this way we can have sort of the change in entropy of the universe all in terms of our chemical system. So we can write this in another way, well not really another way, so delta H minus T delta S. Some of you might be able to recognise that as Gibbs free energy. So we said for a reaction to be spontaneous, for something to be able to occur by the laws of, like the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of the universe must be positive, it must increase. So if this is positive, then delta G, because it's got a negative sign in front, must be negative. So that means that if delta G is greater than zero, the delta S of the universe is smaller than zero and that's not what we want. So if delta G is less than zero, as in delta G is minus, then this must be positive and that's why delta G is less than zero for a reaction to be uh, spontaneous. I just think it's nice to see where it comes from because it makes more sense.